the big question is, will it make it 2,500 miles or at least the 1,500 miles to Austin, Texas in time for South by Southwest? I don't actually know. The entire massive Love's fueling stop here, completely offline, not working at all. I think they lost their internet connectivity and um, yeah, they're screwed. I full send onto the highway. Man, this freaking thing boogies actually. Severe weather warning in effect. <laughs> nice. Of course it came with some Union Jack wrapping to match the Land Rover heritage. Thank Hello, you. good afternoon, and welcome to another Kyle Connor YouTube channel video. We got planes taking off in the distance. You join me at Palm Beach Mitsubishi, where I've left you in the last video where I revealed my new purchase, a 2009 Land Rover Range Rover HSE. And uh, I'm a Land Rover enthusiast. I've owned a few over the years. I explained all that. But now comes time for the very treacherous component. I flew in here this morning. I bought a used Range Rover with, let's just say it's not in perfect condition, but it's close. It's as advertised. And I'm about to take it on a 2,500 mile road trip. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We already have faults on the dash from the suspension that says we can't go above 30 miles an hour, although the, it does go above 30 miles an hour. And either way, it's just going to be a freaking crazy adventure. So let me take you on a quick tour of the Range Rover, and then we're going to leave Palm Beach, or we're in West Palm Beach, Florida, and drive to Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. So you guys know this YouTube channel is dedicated to sort of my cars and enjoyment and things that I love. And Range Rovers, unfortunately, are one of those vehicles that I have an affinity for. And uh, this is my new Range Rover. I, of course, own a classic Range Rover at the moment, and this will be added to the collection. I've actually owned this generation of Range Rover before in the exact same Buckingham blue color that this one's painted in. This is a 2009, which is really the Mark II generation of the L322. The first gens were very BMW heavy. 06 was a blend between BMW and Ford stuff. This is really the last of that middle generation before it got a big facelift in 2010. And to me is the best generation of this truck. The most reliable, I think the best looking, and I really prefer the non-supercharged ones with the colored lights in the back. So this is just a naturally aspirated 4.4 liter V8 it's actually a little bit rusty, needs a little bit of paint. It's not perfect, but uh, I only paid about $12,000 for it. By the time I did a dealer fee and taxes, about $15,000. And as I explained in the last video, a near identical one that needed a little bit, you know, a little bit better shape than this, but this could be brought there, sold for $25 on Bring a Trailer this week. And there seems to be this resurgence of this L322 generation that I'm certainly excited about. So just to show you how clean this vehicle is from the inside just take a look back here and you'll see it's almost like no one's ever even sat in this thing it looks so mint so brand new it's absolutely gorgeous so i'm thrilled with the vehicle i love the color combination it drives great but it's got a couple issues that we need to think about on this trip and the first is you can see it's sitting in high suspension right now. And what that tells me is that, great, the air compressor works. I heard it kick on, that's awesome. It holds pressure because I've, I've now had it running for a little while and it hasn't been trying to refill it. So I know there's no air leaks, but what actually can't happen is the vehicle can't purge the air out of the system. And this is a very common, simple fix. It takes about five minutes to fix. And then we should have a fully cleared working air suspension system. And we're gonna drive it for a little bit and perhaps just knock some of the dust out of the air filter on the exit. But you'll see here, if we look inside the vehicle, no warning lights at the moment. I drove it around a bit, but the suspension indicates when I do indicate a direction change or when we start driving, it'll pop up with suspension fault. Um, I've got the navigation set to go to Austin, Texas. It's 1,104 miles as the crow flies and we are going to go. This panel has some weird cracks in it and I really can't figure out why. It's only this panel and this panel right here, but I'm just gonna order replacement parts for those. Otherwise, the wood's in wonderful shape. It all looks really nice. Just a beautiful vehicle. My favorite generation of Range Rover by far. So um, let's hit the road. We got a nearly full tank of fuel. 
vehicle saying we have about a 400 mile range. If we take a look, 412 miles. The previous owner installed some sort of laser system. I hope that's all unplugged and turned off. Otherwise, we'll have more things to figure out. But we're running, AC's blowing cold. It's 81 degrees out. The radio doesn't work. We have no audio at the moment. So we're just gonna have to use AirPods. And let's hit the road, heading to Austin, Texas. We are pulling out now. Let's go for the first real drive. Now in the last video, um, I was with my new friend, Larry Gary, who sold me this car, uh, who works here at uh, Palm Beach Mitsubishi. And what a nice guy, nice people here, truly. They really um, wanted to make sure that I was the right buyer for this vehicle. They advertised it as, you know, it's an old Range Rover, it's gonna have some problems, but it's really in good shape. The, the bones here are really good, and that's true. It just needs a little bit of TLC. Now the big question is, will it make it 2,500 miles, or at least the 1,500 miles to Austin, Texas in time for South by Southwest? I don't actually know. <laughs> it's really up to the new Range Rover to see how much it likes us, but fingers crossed, it so, drives great, transmission is smooth. I did some wide open pulls on our test drive in the last video, no slippage, which is a common problem on these to have transmission issues, especially with the supercharged ones that made a little bit more power. There's our suspension fault dinging at us already now. So that's gonna be a constant ding that we're gonna have to deal with, unfortunately. And it pops up every few minutes, but I think what I'm gonna do is maybe at a rest stop, get some tools and take the uh, pressure relief valve out and then, uh, or I should say not the valve, but the actual filter for the valve that gets clogged and jammed. Uh, or just driving it and kind of forcing it around will let it work itself out. I'm not totally sure yet. We have a heated windshield, factory Land Rover windshield that looks mint and almost brand new, so that's great. Um, whoever owned this vehicle previously drove it almost none. Uh, and it was fully serviced at Land Rover dealers throughout its entire life, so it really doesn't get that much better than this particular one. And uh, there's the suspension digging at us again. Uh, well, wish us luck, wish me luck. You guys are along for the journey. We'll see if we make it or where we break down. But uh, let's hope we at least get some distance on. My plan is to go to Tallahassee tonight to see my friend Dominic Yoni uh, from Drive Electric with Dominic. Great YouTube channel, new YouTube channel. And I was hoping we could film some videos together, or at least get together and film something. So let's, uh, let's set our destination for Tallahassee. It says we'll get there at about 11 p.m., which is really about 9 p.m. Colorado time. I'm sure I'll stop and fill up and you know just get to know this vehicle over time. And um, we're off on a road trip. Man, this is really stupid buying a used Range Rover and road tripping it across the country home. And it says suspension fault, max speed 30 miles an hour, but we can easily just go right past that. I just hope, I hope that it uh, kind of stays out of our way. So what do you say we throw it into S mode, we go hard throttle. <laughs> I was just ripping it there. Sounds great, feels smooth. These non-supercharged ones are really slow. Uh, but that's not the point of this Range Rover. It's meant to just get up to speed and waft along and do the Range Rover thing. So let's get it up to about 80 miles an hour and set the cruise and I'll see you along the way. Just to show you guys this, we are on cruise control, 80 miles an hour, no worries at all, dead straight on the alignment, super nice. Cruises as you would expect, man, this thing is a stately vehicle from 10 years ago or so. And now it just looks like you're financially ruined, which is what all Land Rovers will do to you. But uh, we got some distance to do and we got to exit here in nine miles and I think we'll be going through the middle of Florida. I have not eaten all day and it's uh, after five o'clock, it's almost six o'clock now, p.m. So I need to get some food, I'm starving and that'll be a great way to start this trip is some, some food. I haven't even had Starbucks today, I know, I'm surprised I made it this long. But the excitement of a new Land Rover with suspension faults got to me. <laughs> well, here we go, just exiting left for the Port St. Lucie, I think is how you say it, uh, service plaza. And uh, we're getting 14 miles to the gallon, cruising at 85-ish, 80, 85. Uh, the suspension fault's still there. And um, 
yeah, cars parking is over this way. Man, this thing cruises great. We're about 45 miles in. There's a supercharger, big installation. Wow, and they even have some normal DC fast chargers over there. Love to see it. But uh, I have not eaten at all today. I left the house at three in the morning, uh, 3.30 in the morning, something like that, and have not eaten an ounce at all. I had a little cookie actually on the Delta flight. So let's run over to here and see if they have any food inside. I guess I don't need to look for chargers because this thing burns fuel. And we'll just keep hammering down. So let's go park this thing and fuel me up. It's kind of weird stopping and not charging. I kind of don't like it. I'm seeing a Model S Plaid over here, an AMG GT, a Sunrun Blue Prius solar installation situation. And we're running into this beautiful service plaza in hopes to find some kind of food and snack. Check this out. Chicken, Wendy's, Annie Ann's, sandwich. Hmm, thinking sandwich. Well, I went with the sandwich. Starts right up. And it even came, take a look at this, because we got a British vehicle. Of course it came with some Union Jack wrapping to match the Land Rover heritage. Now, I guess every time I get in, I got to do this one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah, got to do this thing. And then we got to go to Nav. Agree. Does it remember? The answer is yes. I actually think it does. Yes. Uh, check rear fog light. I know that's out. Little things here or there. So uh, either way, thing drives great no issues really pleased here and it's actually doing great now you can see it knows it's in high suspension and it just can't dump the air out so as soon as we start driving this will fault out but actually one thing i kind of want to check take a look at is if we go here to rock crawling mode yeah terrain response still doesn't allow us to know fully what's going on i want to know if this has a locking diff or not it's an optional extra i don't think it does most of them didn't but how cool would it be if it had the factory locking diff um, we, I guess we won't know until we get the suspension fixed, or I could look up under there. There's a little electronic connection. Didn't make a difference to me either way. This isn't going to be the hardcore off-roader, but now that it's lighter out, we'll open up the sunroof shade, enjoy some natural light. I'm going to eat some sandwich. Then we're going to hit the road. It's full send onto the highway. Man, this freaking thing boogies actually i'm sure at uh elevation it's not going to be that quick but damn revved all the way out to like 6700 there 6600 that felt great suspension fault ah uh, go away nice work and then i got my shifter here gonna knock it back into drive go into top gear sixth gear in this particular one little lane change to the right and we are cruising what a commanding driving position too i just love range rovers absolutely beautiful sunset here on these florida roads we're i don't know an hour hour and a half into our trip right now and it is just gorgeous cruising along a lot of police out there so taking it nice and easy just cruising just above 70 and I am very pleased with the Range Rover. I finally have some food. I'm feeling great. And uh, we got some distance to cover today. Let's freaking do it. I'm just taking a quick little break here at a Florida rest stop. This is the Turkey Lake one. I think we're near Orlando, or at least on the way up there. I'm not exactly sure where we are. I see an EV charging sign. I actually had a bit of a headache, probably from not eating, and uh, just needed to take some Excedrin. So decided to stop here and get it out of my bag in the back. And Florida rest stops really remind me of Autobahn rest stops. Um, perfectly right off the highway, great amenities, and uh, really well-marked EV charging. I actually want to go check that out. So let's go into reverse. And um, I don't believe this screen has a night mode, so I've actually just turned it off. There's a little setting once you get in there to just shut the display off. It's not that helpful anyway for navigation, but I see this EV sign right here. So let's go see what they have for charging. May as well. Man, the rest stops here are just absolutely beautiful. 
trees with lighting through them. Wow, Florida has got it covered. So I guess they put them here on the um, south side rather than the north side, but you can obviously use this little road to get across and take a look at this to the left. There are one, two, three, four, five, six Tesla superchargers, probably version two would be my guess. And then there's also these Duke Energy um, DC fast chargers with both Chatamos out of order. So I'm gonna make a little rate your charge video, I think. And uh, yeah, V2 superchargers, pull-ins. How about that? Man, Florida has got it down with charging and the roadways are awesome. It, Florida's basically like driving in Germany, but somehow there's a speed limit. So uh, yeah, let me go take a look at these chargers and we'll make a little update. Welcome to a rate your charge update here in Florida. We are at the Turkey Lake rest stop. There are six version two Tesla superchargers looking great. And then there are two Duke Energy FSEC units that appear to be offline. So I'm taking a look here correctly. I think the CCS connector says charger out of order. Sorry for the inconvenience. These are Duke Energy park and plugs. This CCS connector shows to be available. They are the, I'm thinking, let's see. I don't know how many amps it shows. The Rima 200 amp cables here. Um, so this one, maybe one CCS is working and this one, one Chatamo is working. But um, again, both units not looking great. So they are the FSEC units. A nice, actually good looking units here. Nice installation, but um, Yep, Tesla has a full supercharger, no line, perfectly placed. I'm unfortunately not driving an EV right now, but there you go, Turkey Lake Station, Duke Energy. You really gotta fix your chargers over here because from this angle, they both are appearing offline, unfortunately. Well, I just shot a little rate your charge update here, all looking kind of okay. Superchargers are full, appear to be working. These two DC chargers um, appear to be both half working. So at least according to the screens, one Shadow, one CCS available. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just unfortunately the sad state of DC fast charging publicly. It just sucks. Like, why is that the normal to not be surprised when chargers are broken? Ah, uh, a bit of a shame. I'm also noticing a little bit of noise coming from the air conditioning unit. So I'm gonna turn that off. And it blows really cold, but I'm hearing it running. So I think it might need an AC service in addition to some other things. Thankfully, it's uh, not hot right now. So we'll save whatever life there's left in that one. <laughs> so Florida Turnpike that way, if we wanna go north, I think we might have to go back to that little road we were just on. Oh no, this will cross us over. Great. And then we're back up on the road, Excedrin in my body. And uh, we're at a half a tank of fuel. I think we'll keep going a little bit before we fill up because why not? We're driving a combustion car. are now officially 250 miles into the trip and I have to say the Range Rover has not missed a beat. This thing has been cruising along comfortably. I've occasionally been knocking it just down a gear, up a gear, fifth gear, sixth gear, just so it's not sitting at the same revs all the time. I don't know, that's just something I typically do in combustion cars. Every few minutes, just get it off the same RPM that it's been sitting at, but all is good. The windshield is getting covered in bugs, but what looks way worse on the camera than it does to me. And this thing is quiet, it tracks straight, it seemingly has good power, more than I was expecting actually. And uh, I mean, it drives, fantastic what the heck this is good <laughs> i'm just running through the issues in my head i really want to play around with the suspension um exhaust valve i really think that or excuse me the filter i really think that's the issue after doing a little bit of research at least i'm hoping that's the issue i want to fuse together the bluetooth uh, control wires for this system here so I can get some audio through and once those two things are done and I get the um, rear uh, fog light fixed and new tire pressure monitoring sensor in the spare that's literally four things right then I think it's pretty much dialed in after that and it just needs some Colton detailing love and a new steering wheel Wow, loving the Range Rover, cruising great, loving Florida roads. It really is, I've really been thinking about it. This feels just like German Autobots. I just wish we could run top speed. There is a slight vibration above 90 miles an hour in this Range Rover. So I think I'm gonna do full fluids on everything, transmission, diffs, 
transfer case, any fluid that's in here, I'm just gonna get it all flushed and put through. I think that should help quite a bit. I'm gonna get new wheels and tires as well and uh, get everything balanced up. Even though it doesn't feel like it needs an alignment, probably do an alignment as well. Once we get it back to Colorado, just do a general freshen up. And uh, oh, the other thing, right, the air conditioning. I wanna play around with that tomorrow as it gets warmer out. Uh, definitely feels like uh, either the belt or the compressor or something's under a little bit of strain. And uh, yeah, wanna get that looked at for sure. So it, it all seems pretty reasonable considering I got half off the market rate. And I know bring a trailer isn't always market rate, it's a bit inflated, but um, I mean, I feel like I still got a pretty good deal on this thing. Guys, check this out. The high beams on this Range Rover freaking rock. I remember actually years ago, my dad had an LR3 and um, I think it had the same high beam lights as this, but look at that. Just a freaking light show over here. It's awesome to see this. I'm just taking a little shortcut over to I-10, I believe, to go west towards Tallahassee. So, uh, I mean, this thing just drives freaking awesome. I keep saying that, but couldn't be happier considering all of the worry when I first picked it up. And what's interesting is the suspension messages are still popping up for sure, but I swear their frequency is uh, slowing down. So maybe I just need to drive it more and it'll stop dinging at me. Well, it's been uh, 345 miles since we've left our original spot. We are still on the original tank of fuel. I don't know if they put regular or premium in it. I kind of wanted to run it down, get everything out of the tank, and then get a fresh tank of premium in the truck. Uh, so we're going to think about stopping here pretty soon. We're uh, below a quarter tank. We're about an eighth tank. It still says we have 93 miles of range. Crazy. Um, and the air suspension warnings have completely gone away. The only time they pop on is if I'm under 30 and then go past 30 or if I go past 80. And that kind of tells me that maybe the problem's gone away, but on this drive cycle, it might be hard coded to actually just ding uh, when you go over those modes, over those speeds, uh, because that's it started with a fault. Anyway, I'm gonna, after we fill it up with fuel, we'll try it out. Problem may have gone away or might have gotten a lot worse. Hard to know, but something has changed. It is no longer dinging at all. Uh, when we're in like a speed range between 30 and 80, if you're there, it just drives like a normal Range Rover. No warning lights, nothing. How about that? And we are now stopping for our first fuel stop and uh, the suspension fault came up as soon as we went over 30 miles an hour because I stopped on the exit, so that's normal, but now it's showing just suspension fault, so new text. Basically, the situation is different. Now, the fuel tank, I believe, is on the right side. If I look here for the little arrow, it is indeed, and we did 367 miles on one tank of fuel, so we could pretty much get a solid 400 miles out of this thing on one tank, which is awesome. So let's go here. I'm gonna fill it up with premium fuel, $4 a gallon. It's not gonna be cheap. Throw it in park. And um, yeah, shows 60 miles remaining. So 400 miles, I think is what we can expect in terms of range. And it wasn't even fully charged, excuse me, fully filled <laughs> before. So let's go fill this thing up and then see if the fault's clear when we restart the uh, vehicle. Well, we are all filled up. We used about 23.3 gallons or so. So let's start it up. We've got a full fuel tank. We are started and suspension's in high. If I put it to middle, ah, suspension fault. Ah, uh, well, we tried. That uh, low tire pressure light goes out after a few seconds. That's for the spare. So interesting. We uh, gave it a go. I washed the windshield. Always love a loves stop. And we gotta do this thing to shut the screen off again, but I think we're gonna get close to our hotel stop here pretty soon. You can see the tire pressure light is off now. And we'll go in here, we'll hit okay. We'll go to setup, screen, off, 
into drive. <laughs> I was hoping the suspension would clear itself. But negative. I'm going to wash the windshield here. There we go. And that's just to uh, get everything cleared off. And we are good to go. Let's do it. Now merging onto the highway, throw it in S and we'll let the V8 sing. I really feel like this thing just hasn't been driven much and needs a good old Italian tune up. It definitely revs a little bit higher than the supercharged ones that I've driven right up to speed. Man, this drivetrain feels stout though. I gotta say, this thing feels great, it really does. All right, let's start looking for hotels somewhere along this stretch. This truck right here is freaking ripping it. It's called Fresh and Lean and Attack Performance Race Truck and Trailer. It's doing like 85 miles an hour. That is a nice freaking rig. Love to see it. I have now just checked into the Best Western in Tallahassee. We made it all the way into the city and right down the street from where I'll be meeting Dominic in the morning at a Starbucks. And um, funny, there's really not many hotels between here and there. It's uh, 12.25 a.m. at the moment, so pretty late, but still I'm two hours behind. Daylight savings time changes tonight. And um, yeah, so not really sure if we go forwards or backwards. I'm always bad with that. We'll find out in the morning. Hopefully the alarm is correct. Um, but I'm gonna edit some videos, try and get them uploaded while I sleep. Hopefully the Wi-Fi here is pretty fast. And uh, the Best Western Plus, the last hotel in this area, with availability and I think I grabbed the last room. Normally I'd try and go for the Holiday Inn. They were sold out, so is what it is. No complaints and uh, like I said, we got the last room in the area so we can't really complain. So uh, let's go park up this Range Rover, get all my stuff, haul it up to the room and get some editing done. See you all in the morning. Good morning. Daylight savings time hit and it went the wrong way. It's now 10 a.m. which is really for my body at least 7 a.m. because two hours behind plus the daylight savings. Range Rover's looking good. Surprisingly, no one broke into it. So uh, Dominic should be just down the road at Starbucks. Let's go say good morning to him. And uh, this will actually be the first cold start that we do on this. That's always a bit scary because the dealer had it warm. So let's see if it actually starts, not that it's that cold out, but with no heat in the engine. Here we go. By the way, the door thunk on this, perfection. <laughs> it's so good. All right, cold start lifestyle. Get it just on the accessory mode. And starts right up, cold start profile. Check rear fog light, all the normal stuff that all goes away. Man, this thing is great. Sounds a little fruitier than probably it did when it was new. Maybe there's a tiny exhaust leak is what I'm thinking. Don't know. But uh, yeah, looking great. Let's go run over. And here we are pulling into Starbucks. I believe Dominic is here already. And so um, I actually believe I've also been to this Starbucks. I think so. So let's go find him. There's his Model 3. Nice. I will park somewhere over here because that looks like a disaster to get in there. So let's park uh, just somewhere over here in the parking lot. Nice old Volvo right here. That thing looks great. And um, let's go say hey and film some videos and you guys can check those out on the Out of Spec Reviews channel as they go live. So uh, I'll catch up with you after we're done filming. Well, we have just finished filming a couple videos. We did one for Drive Electric with Dominic, Dom's new YouTube channel. And we were also with Kay filming, it was really great. And then we filmed one for Out of Spec Reviews. You can go and check that out. But uh, a little bit of hello and goodbye. Okay. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go head into a major storm. Yeah. And uh, so it's gonna be one hell of a day. Let's hope the windshield wipers work which they are looking um, at least attached. So that's step one. So, <laughs> yep, I guess we're gonna head from here towards Houston. Maybe we'll make it to Houston tonight, something like that. Uh, probably could make it all the way to Austin tonight. It's only 12 hours. Yeah, but no real need. I, I don't need to be there till tomorrow morning-ish. Um, so we're gonna go edit some videos and 
hammer down through the rain. Let's see if the Range Rover can do Range Rover things. So good to see both of you. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Well, we have now filmed some videos and uh, we're ready to leave Tallahassee. I knew I was gonna take some time. It's almost noon, it's 11.55, something like that. It's 860 miles on I-10 today, basically going through Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, uh, you know, that whole stretch over to Texas. So doing a Southern route, there's a flood warning the entire way. So um, unfortunately I can't raise the air suspension, but yesterday the truck was starting in high suspension and couldn't lower. And now what seems to be happening is it's starting in normal suspension, which is good. So it dropped slightly, maybe concerning, maybe not. Um, and, and it's totally fine until it, I can hear the compressor kick on, raise the truck to where it needs to be. And then as it purges air, which is normal, that's how the suspension should work. Uh, that's when the fault pops up as soon as it tries to purge. So I'm pretty sure it's just that little exhaust uh, filter, which is a great news because that's like a $5 thing to fix. Other than that, everything is great. The dinging has completely stopped on the suspension. Uh, it's no longer yelling at me. I can drive it and uh, it's fixed itself for the most part. So yeah, let's, uh, let's continue. Let's go drive this thing. And we got some distance to cover. I got Starbucks. We got videos filmed. We got videos live. All is good. Let's rock and roll over to Texas. And here we go, heading over to Pensacola. Well, actually we're not, we're just getting on 10 West. Uh, we will be stuck on 10 West for pretty much the majority of the drive today. I'm not really sure how far we'll make it, especially with flooding. I don't know. Houston's definitely achievable. We could do Austin if we wanted to get in pretty late. It's one hour behind as well. And we've had the daylight savings time. So I'm all kind of screwed up on the time zone stuff. But just right now, open roads, beautiful views, no suspension warnings at all. Everything is good. Terrain response is working. <laughs> This is a great way to start the day. So let's get some distance under us. I'm gonna duck in behind this uh, travel trailer here. Thanks for getting out of our way. And uh, looks like the perfect day for some road tripping. 394 miles of predicted range here. All is looking good. Weather warning in effect. <laughs> nice. The rain is now just starting. I imagine we'll have it for most of the drive, looking at the weather maps continuing. So wipers seem to be good actually, pleased with that. And that'll get all the bugs off the windshield as well. Let's just hope we don't have any major leaks in the Range Rover. We have not tested that yet. <laughs> Always an adventure. Alabama. Wow, Florida really is a long state, just goes on forever and ever. But we are officially in Sweet Home, Alabama. Does that, is that actually what the sign says? That's great. Hold on, let's take a look over here. It says, welcome to Sweet Home, Alabama. Nice. It's probably the only Alfa Romeo in Alabama. <laughs> wow. Kay Ivy, the governor. I met her actually not too long ago at a Mercedes event. The Germans love Kay Ivy because they let them uh, build their factories here for all of their cars. This is Mobile, Alabama, just heading into the tunnel here. I don't think it's that long of a tunnel. Uh, I've driven this stretch a few times and uh, it's always pretty cool going through the Gulf, seeing the bayous or whatever you call them. This is a totally different landscape than the rest of America and certainly a cool one to experience for sure. Do like it around here. It is pretty neat. We are now just on the other side of Mobile. There was a little bit of traffic going through, nothing crazy, maybe five or six minutes. We have not had a single suspension ding on this drive. It has just been no warning lights and full perfection the whole way. How about that? The Range Rover is fixing itself the more we drive it. How is that possible? But um, stopping in here because this is the first Bojangles around the route, on the route, and I'm pretty hungry. It's almost three o'clock and uh, we're gonna stop and fill up. We're at about a quarter tank of fuel or so and 
You see that just at a quarter tank. Ooh, lightning strike in the distance with that Model Y right there. So I believe this is a Loves and a Bojangles. That seems like a great combination. And uh, we'll fill up and then we will uh, get back and continue distance. The rain really hasn't been bad so far. A couple little areas where it was just completely can't see a thing. But it didn't last very long. Look at that. Loves and Bojangles. This is what heaven looks like, folks. <laughs> Well, I just went inside to get Bojangles and uh, I got to start Rate Your Pump. You guys know we have Rate Your Charge for electric vehicle charging. The entire massive Love's fueling stop here, completely offline, not working at all. I think they lost their internet connectivity and um, yeah, they're screwed. I had to actually, I waited in the longest line ever to get this Bojangles. And then just as I walk up, the dude's like, oh, we're cash only. I'm like, you couldn't have just told everyone in line that stood there. <laughs> And then there was a line for the ATM, but I came this far and I couldn't not have Bojangles. So uh, we're under half, a, under a quarter tank now, but uh, we're, there's no way we can get fuel here. So I'm going to probably uh, sit for five minutes, eat, catch up on some emails, and then, um, then we'll hit the road and find the next fuel stop somewhere along the way. Wow, this is road tripping a combustion car going back in time. Thunder's kicking up at the moment too, so I better hurry up and eat and then we'll blast to the next station. And I have to say, I just started it up to idle it a little bit. No warnings. The suspension's actually showing our level indicator. The compressor ran and shut off as normal. We're at normal height, no warnings. Uh, okay, this is good, but let's not get too excited. It is old, old Range Rover after all. But wow, I'm really impressed that it's kind of fixing itself as we drive, knock on wood. All right, well, everything is looking good. Just finished up some lunch. I ran inside, used the restroom, and we are ready to rock and roll. We're gonna continue along I-10 heading west. Uh, just these scattered showers throughout. But um, yeah, nice little break here. Walked around a little bit. Been just doing a lot of distance. I'm kind of used to the EV road tripping lifestyle where I get to stop every couple hours. With this, I kind of have to force myself to take unnecessary breaks. Plug-in hybrid X5 right there. So um, yeah, let's rock and roll. Let's head on out and uh, cruise that away. Actually, it's looking like the pumps are starting to come back online. And I did hear the music start inside, so that's why I kind of browsed over here. And take a look, the pumps are starting up. This is like we're witnessing service fixing everything here. I think actually they lost internet connection probably due to the storms. So I'm gonna run over to get the truck lined up and see if we can just fill up here. It'll save me another stop later which I'm totally interested in. So let me flip around and we'll come over here and yeah, that one's booting up now too. They're all doing it in order. How about that? Well, they've actually all defaulted back to showing please pay inside. Oh, well, we'll hit the next one. We got 180 miles of range at a quarter tank. I think we're gonna be doing just fine. And we actually just had the suspension fault come up, so it's not fully fixed, but I think it is improving. <laughs> Uh, I think it's just that little exhaust uh, filter. Let's hope. So, onto the highway we go. Sounds strong, healthy. Max speed 30. Look at this, way past 30. It sings when you get up on it. <laughs> what a great driving vehicle, truly. Love this thing. The Hancock Whitney Business Mobile App lets you bank anytime, anywhere. It's perfect for depositing checks at the main office or off site. Or even paying. All right, we just filled up with fuel. We got 600 miles of projected range. Holy crap. We're going to jump right back on the highway. And uh, yep, just a nice little pit stop right off the road. That worked out perfectly. Model 3 Performance sending it over there. Dude was ripping through traffic. And we are heading to 12 West. I guess 10 goes to uh, New Orleans. So we're gonna be cutting through on 12 this way. And um, all is looking good. Man, this is just the straightest drive I think I've ever done. Welcome 
welcome to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I've been here a few times and we will be continuing through today. But uh, Louisiana State University is right over here. And uh, we are just going to keep going that way. Stopped here for a little fuel and uh, snacks for me, but I figured we're just over a half tank. Listen to that Cummins. Hell yeah! <laughs> Sounds so good. <laughs> oh, yes! Love a straight six Cummins. Really windy out here. I just needed to get some snacks. Figured we'll top up the Range Rover. We can actually make it to Austin on this tank if everything goes well. Here we are, welcome to Texas. We have made it. Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas. Not in that order. <laughs> the Range Rover has made it. Not a warning light in sight at the moment. Nice work, Land Rover. I've been to Houston a bunch, but actually never been to the downtown area, but have been, uh, maybe that's not true. Maybe I have driven through there, but every time I come to Houston, it's like such a huge sprawling place. I'm always in like a place that's 30 minutes away from Houston. That's still somehow Houston, but uh, gotta love these Texas interchanges. They're just massive. I do like Texas. It's a, it's a wide open state. Everyone, you know, speed limit 60, you do about 110. Is, it seems to be the average going speed around here. <laughs> Look at the size of this gas station. Texas, baby. This thing's freaking huge. There's got to be a hundred pumps. Oh my God. Bucky's and Katy, Texas. Wow. Insane. Everything's bigger in Texas. It's no lie. And here we are just arriving to our hotel stop for the night. We're about one hour outside of the Austin airport and getting pretty tired. It's almost midnight. It's 1145 here right now, which, uh, yeah, you guys know about the time zones. It's 1245 in uh, New York or at least in Florida where we were. But then I don't actually remember what. Yeah, it's really 1145 as of yesterday because of the time zone change. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was tired. And the hotels in Austin were like five, six hundred dollars, and this was only a hundred bucks to stay at the Holiday Inn. Hell yeah! So I'll just wake up a little bit earlier. I got to pick up Anna at the airport in the morning, so we'll do that. And um, there it is, Holiday Inn Express. I love these. It didn't actually have huge reviews, but we're gonna check it out and uh, book the book the room. So let's park this thing. I don't really know where we should park this thing. 
I guess we'll park it. I'm not convinced we should park it in the corner. I don't know. Should have it under a light somewhere. Yeah, we'll park it right over here, right up front. How about that? This should be good. Park it right here. And we'll try not to crash into that Honda. And get it lined up. Boom. We're in. In the park. I'm going to check in. And I'll see you guys on a bright, sunny, hopefully, morning tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. It's 7 uh, 45 and the sun isn't fully up yet. But here's the Range Rover. Looking good. All right, let's pack up. It's about some traffic, looks like, in Austin. So an hour and 45 minutes to get over to the airport. That's what we're doing. All right, let's start this thing up. Right up. Got about a half a tank of fuel. Everything's looking good. So there's the air compressor going. So yeah, no warnings on the dash at all. Compressor still running for the suspension. You can see we're in normal ride height now. I guess it's all good. I think as soon as I try and lower it though and dump the air out, it's not gonna be happy. If you hit this, you'll hit the bridge. <laughs> no Starbucks here in this town. So we're just gonna head over to the Austin airport and uh, Yep, should be there at about 9.20 a.m. or so. And that is where we stayed last night, Holiday Inn Express. Um, yeah, I would say that was, you know, they tried to update it to make it look modern, but it wasn't. <laughs> but the bed was nice, the room was okay, it was just an old hotel that was upgraded. I see why it had low reviews. And um, yeah, still would stay there again, no problem at all. LaGrange in Austin, that's where we're heading to, 71 West. And we got cows, love cows. Well, it looks like we just have a low tire pressure light that actually came on this morning at the hotel and has not shut off yet. Gotta love Texas, cruising at 80 miles an hour on pretty much non-divided highways. I guess the grass is a divide, uh, but there's cross traffic. <laughs> the speed limit's 75. And then you get this entrances like this to these massive ranches that are here. And you just gotta love it. And uh, something cool about Having all the space in the world out here, for sure. And Texas is its own country. Anyway, uh, perfect morning for a drive. Weather conditions are great. It's 54 degrees. A little bit of side wind, but nothing crazy. And just massive ranch lands all around. And well, after a couple phone call meetings on the drive over, super easy, smooth drive, we have arrived at the Austin airport. Let's go find Anna. And here she is. We have arrived. It's gorgeous. Hello. Hi. Okay, well. Okay, I like the interior, but it is a little stinky. Yeah, well, that could just be because I was road tripping it. Oh, that might be it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that marks the end of the Austin trip. We'll wrap up here in a moment. And if you look just out this way, you'll see we have made it to Austin, Texas. We've just parked the Range Rover in a parking garage here. I've brought it pretty high up where there's another Panamera and then it's just a bunch of car stuff down below. And um, there you go, about 1,200, 1,300 miles. Let's take a look at the exact distance that we did. Man, it's looking nice, really improved. I think this thing just sat for the last few years and was pretty gunked up to say the least. Let's throw the key in. Let's take a look at our trip stats. So 1,312.7 miles on this drive. We averaged, if it will go away, check all tire pressures, check spare tire pressure. Thank you, I know, I know, go away, clear. You're supposed to hit this little button to run through everything. Check rear fog light, yes. Washer fluid yeah, low, yes, I know, thank you. Let's see, what was our efficiency? Uh, I did not reset our average speed. 16.1 MPG, definitely improving throughout the drive. Massive headwinds of 20 or 30 miles an hour most of the way. So it was pushing through. I was driving quickly and it really did great. Just so pleased with this purchase. Can't believe the truck was only $12,000, about 15,000 with taxes and fees and all that stuff out the door. That is a seemingly pretty solid purchase and uh, looking forward to getting it dialed in. 
in some future videos, getting it with the other Range Rover back at home and taking some photos, of course. And uh, I might be eyeing yet another Range Rover on Bring a Trailer right now. So we'll see, we'll see. We're gonna go enjoy South by Southwest. Keep an eye on out of spec reviews for future videos coming from this event. But I'm gonna find a little lock button in the broken key. There we go, we are locked. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me on this drive. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye. Guys, take a look at this. We found a Rivian Amazon van here in Austin. In some neighborhoods, people are bored of seeing these things. I still don't think I am. It's actually my first time really getting up close with it. I have not been able to see it up close yet. You can see its tow hook cover is off. You can see the driver assistance is just down here. Looking pretty neat. Dual camera up on the roof over here. But uh, what a neat looking vehicle for sure. And uh, front wheel drive, dual motor, just like uh, the same as the R1T front drive units in this thing. The rear is uh, not powered in this particular version, maybe all wheel drive at some point in the near future. I believe this is the 700, EDV 700. Super neat to see it. Actually guys, check this out. We just came over to our Airbnb. I thought you'd find this interesting. It's a tiny home community where we booked to stay for South by Southwest, but also a bunch of uh, fifth wheels, RVs, and not crazy high end, but uh, take a look at this. I just wanna show you this little tiny home that we booked. It's so cool. So this is what it looks like. It's got our, got our own driveway here and um, got a deck. I mean, it's really not that tiny, it's, it's fine. You got a big TV, kitchen, little work area. You got a record player. I love it. I don't know how to turn it on, but <laughs> You got a really spacious looking bathroom, double sink, and a bedroom back here. Like what, what more do you need in the house? Yeah. It looks awesome. pretty good. I can live in here. Yeah, totally. Well, I've always wanted to stay in one of these. These are cool. And they're really meant to complement, like if you have an RV, for example, that's where uh, you would stay. So now we're going to end the video, the road trip in the Range Rover. Did really well.